بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله the question was asked السلام عليكم uh, how are the خوارج to be dealt with so uh, a person asked how are the خوارج to be dealt with for example in university there are some تكفيريز and خوارج so how are our dealings meant to be with them are we to completely boycott them, give them da'wah, and be friendly with them? Jazakallah khairan. Uh, first and foremost, it is the holy month of Ramadan, and if people, if I can be of help in answering questions for those things that I'm able to answer, then it's preferable that they're related to things in the context of Ramadan and fasting and ibadah and things like this. But however, since our brother was <coughs> was asking, and I've gotten other things, people are talking about major Messiah, and I'm just amazed. And these Messiah should be uh, given to the Mashiach. They should be given to scholars. And some of them, some of the questions, and th this is a point I want to mention before we even get into this question, is sometimes the people, uh, very often, more than not, there's a couple things that are going on in our communities, in the West especially, is that people raise up du'at to a very high level, above their level. And so it's up to du'at to be, to always know your level, remind yourself of your shortcomings, and you know better your own sins, and remind yourself so that way you don't get caught up. Because we've known so many over the years who got built up to being big mashayikh, and then they fell, and the people knocked them down and destroyed them and destroyed their honor and so it's very important to I'll always put that in perspective for one when answering questions and dealing with things the second thing that I want to mention is that uh, we find that a lot of the youth are asking about major Messiah too you know issues of takfir issues of other bijahil issues of uh, of jihad and and, and so forth. And a lot of these issues are not even really relevant for them. They're more issues that we could say elmi. You know, issues that are elmi in the sense that they're knowledge-based research issues, research-based issues. And some of the issues require, especially when it comes to making a hukum on certain things, they require major ulama. And not even, I'm not talking about just scholars that you just call Sheikh so-and-so on the phone, but some of these messiah are so major and they uh, have so much details and they are dealt with by the major ulama. So I just wanted to point out those two facts that we always have to keep in mind and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with success. As far as your situation, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with success, bless us all with ilm al-nafi, rizqan tayyibu, amal al and may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with the that, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the Muslims everywhere, and please, ya Rabbil Alameen, forgive us, ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And so, with regards to the Khawarij and how they should be dealt with, for one, the Khawarij have a particular type of danger, the Tekfiris. And so, again, as our Sheikh used to always say to a Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, half of the law ta'ala, and don't think I'm muta'asib to Sheikh Ibrahim because I quote from him, it's just I spent a lot of time with him when I lived in Medina. I spent probably a good four years or more studying with him. So, of course, there's an effect uh, in, in what I learned. And one of the things he used to mention to us, and especially in his his uh, PhD thesis entitled Mokif Ahl Sunnah Min Ahl Bida Wal Ahwa, uh, the position of Ahl Sunnah with regards to the people of innovation uh, and desires, is an important thing. And I was just reading it from Imam Shatabi as well in his book Al Etisam. I was just going through this issue, uh, and uh, one of the things he said is, of course, that Ahl Sunnah tafawit or Ahl bid'a tafawit. That meaning that Ahl Sunnah has different levels and Ahl bid'a has different levels. So, for example, the lay person from Ahl Sunnah is not like maybe the Talib al Ilm. And the Talib al Ilm, they have different levels. There's some Tulab al Ilm that are very strong, and then there's some that are in the middle, and then there's some that are weak, and then there's some that are beginners. So they have different levels. You have to know that even when you're asking questions and and so on and so forth. That people have different levels of knowledge. You can't expect the same from everyone. That's another important thing I want to mention. And, 
and that and, and and there's that doesn't take away from the the good that people uh, are bringing but it's just knowing your level and so Ahlul Sunnah has different levels and Ahlul Bidah has different levels. So for example, we have the Jahmiya, we have the Ma'tazila, we have the Khawarij. Those early sects that held that, those creeds purely are not like a lot of some of the people of Bidah that we deal with today. For example, when you talk about Ikhwan al-Muslimin or you talk about some of the things, it depends on their level of Bidah. For example, you have some I I individuals, especially in Jamaat Tablik, that go with Khuruj with them or people who are uh, with Akhwan and Muslimin. These are big groups. These aren't really sects in Islam. These are groups. So they're different between, we might refer to them as Hizb, you know, that they are uh, Hizbi groups compared to uh, a, a, fir a Furqa, a Firqa, a Firqa like uh, uh, the Khawarij or the Mu'tazila, these old sects. They have a particular ideology and a particular creed that they have. Whereas these groups, they may have some aspects they share in creed, but for amongst, uh, from you'll find some, as Sheikh Muqbil mentioned about the uh, the uh, Jamaat Tablik, he said you'll find a person from amongst them who's been making khuruj for 20 years who still does major shirk at the graves because of the jahil. But he believes in the movement. He loves the movement, but he is a maybe a pure... Uh, Sufi grave worker, grave worshiper, and when I say Sufi, there's different levels to sawab. There's many different levels, so don't say all the Sufis are like this and all the Sufis are like this. They have different levels. They have different levels of mukhalifa. They have different levels in which they uh, f go astray from the Sunnah. There are some that have light to sawab. You know, maybe they just do some extra ibadah and some bid'ah in their ibadat. You know, they have they turn off the lights and they say some particular chants that may not have any shirk, but just are a bid'ah. You know, they may have some bid'ah. Then there are those who w go to the graves and sacrifice to the graves, and there are those who even before they get married, they have to have their sheikh consummate the woman before. And this is not me making this up. This is well known in some of the Sufi traditions. And, and I've talked to b major uh, Tulab al-Ilm when I lived in Shehr in Hadramaut, and one of them, one of the big in the Merkas in, in Dar al Hadith and Sheher, he told me this. He said, Our grandfathers, this is how what they used to do. They used to go to their the Sheikh of the Qariya, the Sheikh of the village, and they would give their uh their bride and, and the Sheikh would bless her with the consummation. Then he can have her. Then then he can consummate his wife, consummate with his wife, Allah. So it shows you that there's different levels of bid'ah. There's bid'ah kufriya and bid'ah ghayra kufriya or ghayra uh, there's different types of bid'ah. There's bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam, and there's bid'ah which is much less than that. So that's very important to know. The reason I mention that, and, and I guess why we're going into this a little bit more, because we want to make it a bit more beneficial than just answering your question. We want to give you some tools, be it in Allah Ta'ala, to look at some of these things in the future. So you said uh, you go to the university, and there's Tekfiris and Khawarij. Um, how are we to deal with these, meant to deal with them, are we to completely boycott them, give them da'wah? So this is very important to know. This depends upon your level of knowledge. If you have a level of knowledge and they are not someone who is harmful to you and either uh, there's a harm with them. I'm not saying you go and you have tea and you guys mix and this and this and this. But what I'm saying is as far as the issue of boycotting, that there's, there's a, a lot of tafsil. There's boycotting to protect yourself from their harm. There's boycotting as uh, ta'zib, you know, to give them a, like a punishment, kind of like, you know, to warn them, hey, what you're doing is a major sin, you're bid'ah, so we're making hajr of you for this. And then there's also bid'ah, uh, we said to protect ourselves or as a... Uh, you know, or to rectify that individual, to rectify. So if you have theory, if you have a uh, an effect upon them, they respect you, then maybe you're making to you're making a uh, 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 hajr of them uh, may have a positive effect. And so the ulama, Sheikh Islam especially, mentions this in detail in his books, in his Mijmua Fatawa, and you'll find some translated works that are on Hajr as well that are beneficial in this uh, 
uh, that uh, talk about this in the Masada and Mufasid, and we've taught uh, the Sheikh Ibrahim's and the Seha, which touches on it, uh, you know, actually goes into it pretty well. And there, there's um, uh, a lot of other things that I imagine that are translated in English that can give you, uh, you know, insight into that. And so it's very important to be able to uh, to 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 understand those Messiah and. If they are not, if they do not, you do not have an effect upon them and they have more knowledge than you and they can confuse you, then no doubt you should not, you should boycott them because the Tekfiris are not like a lot of other groups. They are much more dangerous They're in their ideology in that they often espouse violence and, and, and are really very good at poisoning. You know, they're, they can plant their seed of Shabahat in doubt where it can spread like a wicked cancer. And this is the case that we have of many of those people who I've talked about many times. And this time I won't mention his name. So uh, that's, that's something that we, we have to be aware of and you have to uh, consider as far as da'wah. If you're able to give da'wah, give them da'wah. Call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet said, مِنْ يَحْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجَلًا وَاهِدٍ خَيْلًا لَكَ مِنْ حَمْرًا نَعْمٍ That if uh, one person is guided to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by your hand, it's better for you than the red camels. And I want to end by mentioning that my, uh, a little bit about my personal experience that I remember once I went back from, came back from Saudi and I didn't know these individuals at, at that time. One of them I knew, these were both Somalis. One of them, uh, both of them are, are pretty strong students of knowledge, the, the one, the leader, was very strong in knowledge, okay? He studied in Pakistan and so on, graduated from the Islamic University in Pakistan. And so they took me out to dinner, you know, so I didn't know what this was about. Oh, mashallah, brother Khalid, how are you? They took me out to dinner. And I remember after dinner, we sat in the car and that's when it started. And it was almost an hour, if I recall, that we were in the car and they were uh, you know, trying to grill me and talking about the ulama and I was going, we were going back and forth and they were praising Bin Laden and other takfiris that were uh, prominent at that time. And so we went back and forth and we battled. And uh, after that, I, when I saw him, because I saw that he was on a wicked path and there was nothing to say to him, he's one of the few individuals that I actually implemented the boycott, that I made hajr of him. And I, I'd see him in the masjid and I was teaching in the masjid at that time. He'd come in, he'd greet me, but, you know, no, I, I found there was more maslaha. Now, the inv individual ended up getting deported, Wallahi alhamd, and his, his sidekick uh, was there, and I boycotted him for a long time. And then one day, subhanAllah, another brother came to me and said, you know, he's left this and this and this and this, and what have you, and, you know, we had amicable terms. You know, I greet him. He became a local imam in the Seattle area. And, you know, as far as I know, he left that. And my point is, is that sometimes there can be that uh, beneficial effect. Now, I don't know if it had anything, my effect. It probably wasn't. It was probably just him coming around with Lillai Lamd, maybe some of the other, because we have a lot of strong uh, students of knowledge there in Seattle, the Somalis especially. Uh, and, and some that are Mashayikh, I would say, very, very strong. Uh, and they, uh, you know, hopefully it was from their dawah and their khair. And so this is just to tell you uh, that in general, be cautious of the takfiris. Don't get into debates with them. If they respect you and they will listen to you, then yes, give them dawah. If otherwise, don't uh, mix with them. Don't mix with them. And if it be, becomes necessary, don't give salams if there is maslaha, if there's a real positive Islamic benefit. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad.